invent something, they associate it in, in, with sitting and sweating and discussing and fighting and sort of confronting with the problem. And my finding is that this, this is counter-effective. Uh, confronting with the problem dumps creativity, kills creativity. So what then? And uh, here goes the research. So the first of all, on the, on the more neuro, neuroscience level, what happens in your mind that your mind, mind starts bubbling with ideas? By the way, the bubbling with ideas, unexpected but bubbling with ideas, is, has a name and very popular now in the Silicon Valley. Uh, this is serendipity. Serendipity is after a um, Persian uh, old fairy tale about some princes who were banned because of crazy ideas and they were wandering around and having crazy ideas. And someone said that, and these were, the, the title was The Princess of Serendip. So someone got the idea that serendipity could be the name of um, having innovations, coming up with ideas and in an unexpected way. So you, you walk, you talk, you play, you drink beer, and that's that. And there is the bubble with the new idea. So the question for uh, Silicon Valley is, was how to boost creativity. Then someone said, no, this is an oxymoron because creativity is unexpected, random. How can you organize something what is uh, by definition random? Then they said, no, you are not going to struggle with serendipity directly, but we are going to create a milieu, an environment which supports it. What sort of environment? Now, they started to study it. For instance, they compared two uh, ph pharmaceutical ventures, and uh, during the same period of time, the American venture hired more experts and had wonderful managing charts with arrows and everything was super, but the results were picking down, totally down. And the French was, was totally chaotic and they went up with thousands of publications, innovations, patents, and so on. So then they studied what is the difference. And what they found? Random thing. Because the um, French, uh, uh, French uh, firm went through retrofitting of their building because of uh, some issues there. And they dispersed the staff over random locations making them meet in random groups, which changed after a while over the time of retrofitting. And what they found that meeting randomly in groups inspires people a lot, makes them think about the ideas which were seeded by the others. So random groups was the core of boosting serendipity. And then it went on. And for instance, Yahoo at some time was totally close to bankruptcy. Then came Yarisa, uh, Marisa, uh, another CEO. She said that the reason is that people are being sent home with their laptops and working from home, that we need to bring them together and organize a central place at the firm with some coffee so that the the uh, coffee making place is not somewhere hidden and you make your coffee and go back to your box, but central and people should sit there, meet and get paid for unstructured uh, meetings with random people. And that actually boosted again the creativity and so on. So, they call it a horizontal or diagonal connections. Usually we are used in organizations to vertical connections so that uh, things go up and down, which is also good, but the, the horizontal in exchange, interchange of ideas is one of the ways the creativity can be boosted. The other thing is that mm, the, there, there, this I mentioned is neuroscience. How does it actually happen? That was my passion. So th there is something like brain plasticity. 
the, the real creative brain it has more plasticity, it's open to new neuronal connections. So the question is how to boost new connect, neuronal connections. New connections between neurons, uh, it happen when the synapses touch, but also on a distance where there are some neurotransmitters which transmit distant neurons between distant neurons. Those neurotransmitters are, for example, dopamine and uh, endorphins. The two of them, both, have another function. They make you happy. They, they bring joy. They, um, for instance, when you are wounded, they actually kill your pain. So, um, the, the neurotransmitters play a <clears throat> double role. They connect, but they also make you happy. And they found that it also works the opposite way. The more joyful you are, the more happy you are, the less you struggle directly with the problem, the less blood, sweat and tears, then the more creative you are. So, again, meeting places over around the coffee machine with some joy and happiness and with random people uh, encountering each other makes a real jump in the in possible creativity. So then they discovered uh, also uh, that dancing boosts creativity. So that, because in dancing, when you're dancing, you are synchronizing on various levels. Uh, you, you sort of, uh, this, this is a lever for your not only mental empathy, emotional empathy, but also kinesthetic empathy. And all those three, mental, emotional, and kinesthetic empathies, actually um, are, are very much enforced when you dance. And this, in return, boosts your creativity. So, for instance, do you know for this um, uh, ISEC, the students' organization, whenever, whenever they start a session, they, they start with dancing. So they dance, 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 and they go to the session, and this really, um, you, you can feel the atmosphere of people being creative. Also, there were researchers that this is, has, has another side effect that people who dance, uh, they are aging in harmony, they are, uh, live longer, they are healthier, and so on. So, dancing, being happy, uh, that's not all. Then, the, the other thing is that if you confront, as I said, confronting with the problem kills creativity. You can't find good results when you sit, confront, sweat. On the uh, on the contrary, on contrary, when you have keep a distance, when you are very distant from the problem, then you are um, there is a chance for creativity to be um, triggered. So, um, for instance, they made a research. They told people that the, the story about a prisoner that there is a prisoner on the ninth floor who wants to escape. And he found a rope, but the rope was half that size he needed. So he, de so he detached it and um, put the two ends together, and that was enough to escape. This is the story. The question was how he did it. People usually, in a linear way, they think that he cut the, the rope and how cutting the rope could help. But the, re the real solution, the creative solution, is that they detach the rope along the length and then um, made a, one, one big, uh, uh, the size he needed rope out of it. Now, the trick was that they divided randomly the group into two parts. One part was told that it happened just around the corner, and the other part was told that it happened hundreds of miles away in San Francisco. Now, the question is, they wanted to see which group will get to the answer, the creative answer, more quickly or, or more intense, more, more good answers. And they found that that definitely significantly different was the group which thought that it was far away because they were distant to the problem. So this opens up another avenue, how to create this distance to the problem. 
one of the royal gateways is to build metaphors. So you can instead of just directly struggling with the problem, you can build metaphors, create some stories, um, change the real life situation into some uh, fantasy or some Muppets, puppets, whatever. For instance, what I do when I work with business teams or with families, because I am also a family therapist, when they are stuck, I tell them to close their eyes and imagine that they are an, an Indian tribe thousands of years ago, thousands of miles away, and they are in a tent as a family, as a group, preparing for a dance. And they hear a drum, and the drum is drumming, yeah? that there is a central square, they will eat, all, all the families will come and dance their family dance. And imagine what happens, who is helping whom, then you walk to the central square, then your turn, and I, I'm saying it in a nutshell, then your turn is to come up and dance your family or group dance. And who is the leader? Who is closer to whom? Who is an outsider in this dance? Who is initiating the dance? And open your eyes and tell the story. So people get so much excited, involved, because it was distance. They have all the possible insights, uh, which otherwise uh, the the therapist or the coach would have to struggle to actually squeeze it out, and and uh, and this is this is also a joyful experience. They love. They they have this wonderful attitude which boosts creativity, which is love and distance, and so on. So also simulations, theater playing, and so on. So this is. Um, an ongoing story, how can we boost creativity, but creativity can't be uh, augmented in a traditional way. There has to be some craziness in it. So this is a new kind of science I'm involved in, science, science of craziness, positive craziness. And this, uh, this could be at a very per basic level, for instance, at your, in your family initiating some new um, uh, location to go and explore or do, make some surprising gifts, uh, but also at work um, changing situ the situation or whatever, giving people more opportunities to grow. So um, this is, uh, at, at many levels, it's helpful. Also, when you are just a follower and following traditional paths, uh, you actually kill the dynamics and you make people around dump with their energy. I, I uh, noticed in my many interviews that people who are creative, they create a sort of a field, energizing feel around them, which influences others' creativity. So it's like, giving it to the artist just per, by, by the mere existence of, of this creativity feel, uh, so some vibrations. And this actually is worth researching, how does it happen. But, uh, in the, I found, for instance, that the um, communities where Ashoka fellows operate, they are much more creative than than other communities. So, so there is something around sharing of creativity. Einstein said that creativity is, uh, is, uh, is the, the way the intelligence operates. So this is uh, also being more intelligent. You can be open in exploring. Uh, for instance, when, when you are stuck with something, you, you start to trigger your imagination. Try to to play a theater. There, there, is a, there are books written by uh, Professor Chinshant Mihaly, uh, Flow and Creativity, two books. He researched many creative people around the world, physicians and theater people and so on. Some of them were, uh, it was a few decades ago, some of them were also during the Second World War, prisoners of the camps, and uh, their story was always that creativity 
brings them a lot of joy and detachment from the dark reality, also from the dark, gloomy situation when they were imprisoned by the Nazis or so, whatever. The, the stories were that they built up their own internal theater, the simulation of life. And, and that also <clears throat> helped them to interact. For instance, there are, there are many stories of people in extremely bad conditions, like in communist uh, prisoner, prisons. They tried to organize, for instance, a competition of poetry. But how could they communicate? They had no pen, nowhere to write. So they used the dust which was on the, their shoes to write on this dust and show the shoes to the others. I think that there is no limit. It's not that only wealthy countries and if you are well off you can be, now I can be creative. It's also something which happens in worse conditions, the most disadvantaged places in the world. And let me give you an example. In Africa where uh, there is a lot of uh, pollution uh, of cans, coke cans and beer cans on the ground. And second, the, um, the level of uh, education, especially physics, is terribly low. And third, nobody has electricity and nobody can heat up their water at home to wash. So those three completely distance issues, the one of the definitions of creativity is divergent thinking. Divergent means connecting completely unconnected divergent issues. So this guy connected the three. He was a teacher, physics teacher, and he was very unhappy that all that is so at a, such a low level, but also was fond of the call environmental issues. So he organized a competition for kids to collect the cans and make a con, con a, Conjunctive mirror out of it, just to uh, to um, heat water. Which one? Which one was better? Which one heated faster? A bowl of water and so on. So um, the kids were involved in cleaning up the the environment, but also in understanding the, the sun rays and how they actually come to one point when they heat the water and got hooked to physics. And third, they brought this device home and, and home it served as a heater for, the, for water in the kitchen and in washing. So this sort of divergent creative thinking can happen everywhere under all possible conditions. And uh, it's not limited by anything, anything. There's no limits to be creative.